Hi, my name is Anamika Hops, and this is The Art Friend Show, where every conversation focuses on getting to know the essence of creativity itself. I'd love to invite you as well to join me inside of Art Friends School, where we go deeper into these topics and join in with other art friends around the world. Thanks so much for joining us, and let's get to the show. Welcome to the Art Friends Show. Here's someone cool that you're gonna love to know. Hi, I'm Anamika Hops, and I'm an artist in Portland, Oregon. It's day 98 in a row of the Art Friends Show. And our interview guest today is Krista Brock. She lives in Florida, about 30 minutes outside of Orlando. And she has a really cool story to share with you today. I'm gonna invite her in and we'll get to it. There you are. Hi. Hey, yay, it worked. Yeah, see, easy peasy. Yeah. So hi, can you tell everyone your full name, where you live, and then we'll just jump right in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Krista Brock, I am from Claremont, Florida, originally from Los Angeles. And um, what was my other question? Did you ask me one other question? Uh, um, where you live, and then I think we'll just get into the story yeah. of, um, you know, a bit about your past that's led you to where you are today. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think we all have, you know, a past that um, kind of gets us to art. Uh, but I think the most pivotal, pivotal one that I had was three years ago. Um, I had contracted COVID early on in March of 2020. And right away. Wow. At the beginning, right at the beginning before we were, masking. I had gone back into teaching world history. Um, I had burned out with art and um, went to Zoom with my kids and couldn't breathe. And then 28 days later, isolated in my room for 28 days, painted, learned how to meditate like a pro, um, did yoga, you know, kind of looked at it like a forced retreat for myself because yeah. I slow down. Um, and on the day that I came out that I was cleared to be with my family, uh, I baked muffins and swept the floor. I felt crappy, but I was like determined, like everybody's been bonding during COVID and I'm stuck in my room yeah. and stroke, a rare, um, stroke called a cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, wow. um, a grand mal seizure in my living room in front of my husband oh. and my oh. son. Yeah, oh my God. This, uh, pretty crazy yeah. because, you know, I, I was a really healthy person. Like I did not fit into any of the categories and it was so new. We didn't realize it was more than a respiratory situation. Um, and I was in ICU for a week. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I'm very lucky to be here. Um, every doctor that was kind of helping me and working on me at the time could not understand how I could talk or walk or reason, like wow. basically just be here. Yeah. Um, and, and when I came out of the hospital, you know, it was kind of like rainbows and unicorns for a long time, you know, oh, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be alive, mm -hmm. not focus on any negative things that I was feeling, mm -hmm. like the PTSD, the complete total fear of having another stroke. Yeah, I just tried to be positive, um, but all along knowing that it had really changed me. Yeah. Um, one of the deficits that I had, I had no typical deficits of a stroke. I lost my artist. Hmm. So how did you, how did that like incredible loss and really frightening yeah. experience um uh or i guess to me it appears frightening it sounds like it was you said you have some ptsd from it so traumatic certainly yeah um you know how there's probably a lot to this story but how did that lead you to a place where you are today three years later you know yeah. embodying an artist surrounded by your work um how did it change your work and and what's the theme of the present yeah. Okay. So yeah, there is a lot all chunked in there. Um, the first theme, I guess, when I recognized that I had lost 
my artist self. And I, I say that it sounds ridiculous, but I, she was foreign to me. Like the, mm -hmm. I would look at any type of my supplies that I loved, even go and shop for them. Mm -hmm. And it, it didn't feel like me. Mm -hmm. um, every day I would try something like, even if it was just drawing a tree, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it would just be like, I oh, don't know, like, this is not me. Um, the theme of that, that first year was patience and perseverance. Mm -hmm. um, and really, really recognizing that for so long, I had not taken care of what I needed, mm -hmm. taking a nap, creating mm -hmm. art that I, I wanted to create instead of creating art that was making me money. Okay. That mm -hmm. for the first year, it was patience and perseverance. Mm -hmm. Second year, um, there was a lot of forgiveness of myself, mm -hmm. um, a lot of admitting to the anxiety that I was feeling, the anger I was feeling. Instead of just, you know, I was always so grateful to be alive, mm -hmm. I had, I was not not recognizing the fear I had mm -hmm. and the anxiety. And I feel like that really scared my curiosity and my creativity away mm -hmm. because I'm not able to paint it out like I had always done. So it was just kind of trapped. Yeah. Um, I started um, counseling for the PTSD and started journaling mm -hmm. and started writing my story, which mm -hmm. was bringing out a lot of stuff. Yeah. Once I started writing, my desire to create was coming back yeah. little by little. And my first thing I tried to paint was mixed media collage. So that was the only thing I had ever done. I loved that. That was like the messy and the big and the, you know, just mm -hmm. great. And it was so overwhelming to me. Oh. And mm -hmm. like, I always liked acrylic inks. Let's try that. That felt too, um, abstract or too mm -hmm. free and mm -hmm. it was more simple. It was like the messiness and the free was too much for you when you were recovering from the stroke. And, yeah. I, and yeah. it wasn't that I, I didn't have the mental capabilities. It wasn't like that. It was just, it didn't feel nurturing at all to me. It mm -hmm. felt like work. And then um, I started with watercolor, which I had never explored before. Mm -hmm. And cool. this of sitting outside on my patio with a little thing of water with nature around me painting in watercolor and I loved it yeah it, it just felt healing I took um uh Mady and Faith's three-day free um watercolor um mm -hmm. they were doing and cool. yeah an immediate it like oh, mm -hmm. okay this this is not who I used to be and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't have one particular style, but this is what feels good. Mm -hmm. And I flow of it. Um, Can we see some examples? Sure. Yeah. So I still mix media because I definitely like to bring in the acrylic inks. Mm -hmm. um, acrylics. Uh, so this is a little collection that I'm starting called um, Malibu. Well, can you hold it really close so we can see the fine detail? Rad. Oh, I'm loving those. Thank you. Dots. So you said this one was inspired by California? Yeah, I born and raised there and I lived in Leo Carrillo um, when I was little um, along PCH. I don't know what that it, means. It's like uh, Southern California off of PCH. It's one of the beaches. Um, highway. Sorry, I'm such an Oregon yeah. kid. I like they don't let me out much. Pacific <laughs> Highway. Yeah. Okay, um, cool. Yeah. My dad was in a rock band, and my mom was, you know, in entertainment and all that. And we lived up in the highest point of Malibu. Uh huh. Walk down and just, you know, hang out at the beach. Wow. And Sweet. so yeah, I've got this little guy. And that's the other thing is that bring it super close. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I love to see like the fine detail of the dots. Yeah. What are you making those marks with? So those pen. <laughs> Sometimes I'm making it with a gel pen and the gel pens can really tick me off. Oh really? How do <laughs> they tick you off? Yeah. Um, for the 
the most part, I paint with a, um, like this is my absolute favorite tool is a wood skewer. Oh. Yeah, hot damn. I've got um, this ceramics tool. Yeah, yeah, I have one of those. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It, like, it, sorry, the camera. Yeah. I don't know how to do this. I have yeah. weird angle. <laughs> Little bump on the bottom. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's what I used to always use those. And now they're so loaded with paint. Uh -huh. um, I was yeah. very inspired by Laura Horn. Um, oh, yeah, I, she is. Yeah, I see that kind of, uh, mm -hmm. you're in the, you're in that family of work. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had taken a little like mini YouTube tutorial of hers just with painting with natural things. And I've always used my skewer. Uh -huh. and, um, but yeah, I absolutely love, like I rarely use brushes anymore. Mm -hmm. I just go out into the garden and kind of pick cool. branches. Yeah, I love it. Oh, it's yeah. fun. Very cool. Another guy yeah. that I really hold it close. Hold me closer, tiny <laughs> painting. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Really working with the nature of paint itself, like the way it spills, the way you yeah. move it. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, it's kind of like those magazines when you would go into the dentist highlights magazine. Huh? huh? I mean, I mean, you're yeah. probably young. Right? No, I had highlights. Like subscription yeah. for sure in the back it was like you had to find the hidden images uh -huh. yep that's kind of what i do mm -hmm. yeah oh so two recurring themes in your work that you often like see in your paintings are um owls and women so Women's tell me about this when did this start what's it like for you why do they show up all the time yeah my probably my first one that really showed up i have this she's kind of big oh wow hi honey yeah yeah he's a big one and i she was the first one that i finally finished right when i started painting again she had been an unfinished i have this girl here she showed up oh cool yeah um and so basically you it's it, they come at times when i'm struggling um i have a real connection to my grandmother who collected owls, she was kind of the secret keeper. Um, mm -hmm. I found I had a sister when I was 40 and um, owls began to show up <laughs> like in really random places in person and on my paintings. Yeah. And I look at that as kind of um, an apology mm -hmm. from her mm -hmm. and letting me know that, you know, it was time to forgive a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, my women have shown up kind of like at times when I'm very stuck. Mm -hmm. um, they usually are coming and appearing with a spill. Usually oh, my amazing. Things, yeah. it's like the cat walks by and spills. I spill, I blot it. Um, this is one of the newer girls that just showed up for me. Hi. Yeah, so um, I usually go with it. I love when my girls show up. They kind of act as a reminder of my artist self. Mm -hmm. um, not me, yeah, but it's tapping into the reminder that she's still in there when I'm struggling, oh, you know, and just you're gonna love the first art friend class later today. <laughs> I'm very excited. Yeah. <laughs> very excited. Yeah, as soon as I heard the art friend I was like oh mm -hmm. yeah I have one of those yeah and she has come back so uh, yeah I love it so my theme for like the future is really um reflection restoration um and you know just recognizing for once that your artist self is there when you're ready mm -hmm. and that uh, you know some of our greatest uh, setbacks in life can be our best setups and we have to tap into that. Yes. Yeah. And you so have tell me, tell me, tell me about the retreat. Yes. yes. You yes. are going to be leading about this. Yeah. So I, um, for a big, huge goal of mine, um, I want to lead a retreat and anybody who's interested, DM yeah. me. Um, yeah. So message yeah. Krista, if you're interested. Yeah, and coming to her retreat. So tell us about your retreat. Yeah, so uh, for the kickoff of my retreat, I really want it to be about 
tapping into those hard times that we've been through, um, specifically, you know, to paint them out, you know, if you've gone through a, an illness that robbed you of that creativity yeah. or um, anything hard really in your life. And a lot of people will stop when they lose that creativity and like, oh, I just am not into it anymore. This is about tapping into it and really healing ourselves through painting it mm -hmm. out. Um, mm -hmm how you would go about doing that through um, just really intuitive experience, you know, starting with some Qigong that healed me incredibly um, and music and talking. Cause I believe that a lot of what helped me was talking mm -hmm. to other people mm -hmm. um, about how hard it was to kind of feel alone mm -hmm. in the darkness. Yeah. Um, and then writing about it. So there'd be like an incorporation of some free flowing writing and then how to put that down onto a canvas or mm -hmm. a piece of paper without too much thought. And mm -hmm. I have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, it's very healing. In the end, you, you kind of are working out. It's your counseling, you know, it's a very cathartic experience while you're painting and you're, you're painting the colors of what that experience was. Mm -hmm my experience the day that I had the stroke, it was the bluest sky I'd ever seen. Mm. And all of the colors were so vivid. I didn't know where I was. I didn't recognize my son or my husband, but I remember wow. colors so perfectly that day wow. as I wheeled into the ambulance. Wow. Um, taking the colors, mm. the scent, smells, the sense, the, the feeling of that experience, mm -hmm. journaling, little bit about them but then taking those colors and putting them down on paper can be very releasing yeah wow um so many things in there yeah. that are powerful and I think that what I'm hearing is that if this retreat that you're dreaming of doing and will do one day you would like to start with qigong uh like a energy work exercise and then move into journaling and painting intuitively and having some facilitated or some time to talk yes well um yeah i mean what a, i think you know i've been, been teaching adults for 20 years now in various forms which um kind of you know helps helps me remember that I don't know, I don't know the answers. I'm not a therapist. I'm not, you know, yeah. this or that. But sometimes simply creating the space and time and the day and the materials yeah. with your fellow humans to be creative can be so, so, so powerful. It can be joyful. It can be, you know, in this context of you're talking about how your setbacks could be your setups. Would be like the theme of the retreat i mean yeah yeah and there is thing do it yeah <laughs> do it, yeah. Do it. I, I get take it. a day and do just a day you know yeah. yeah i get excited thinking about it you know um it's just you know the how to um and the i know it's there because i i know that it helped me tremendously and i yeah. know that it helped other people and i think that when you're an artist and you're in your studio or your corner of your room or your tiny room, wherever you are. And you're trying to work in a room. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, I've been all over the place. We yeah. just made it room for me. Um, yeah. But I think when you're alone as an artist, but then you're alone in your healing, mm. it can be hard. Mm -hmm. You know, other artists can relate to that creative block, to that mm. feeling of, can I do this anymore? Do I want to do this anymore? Mm -hmm. Everything, ugh, everything sucks. Like, mm, yeah, you're like over in the perspective of fear. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it takes somebody who has been through it mm -hmm. your, or your like coach or your mentor or just another artist friend mm -hmm. to say, be patient. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I've been through it. This will pass. Mm -hmm. Patient. Yeah. Be new. Yeah, I love that. I love that you're, you know, called to offer it. And um, I think that what you just spoke feels very doable. And 
Um, yeah, is there anything else you want to offer to people or invite them to come along with? Sure. So I am working on my website. It's up and running. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the least favorite part of the whole thing for me. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. But um, I would love to get a newsletter going. Oh, okay. um, And I have been blogging a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love for people to follow me on Instagram and subscribe on my website and, mm -hmm. you know, be part of that journey um, mm -hmm. because I will be doing some offerings. I'm going to be teaching a workshop in Winter Garden, Florida at a place called Live Trends. It's filled with plants and it's beautiful. Um, Fun. You know, and I like to hear other people's story of survival. Mm -hmm. um, it's inspirational to me. And I, I kind of have started a book kind of, yeah, about survival stories and mm -hmm. as an artist and what that does to you and how you can get past that. Wow. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Art Friend Show. Thank you for having me. Sharing, you know, this glimpse of your story and, and how you're, you know, committed to, you know, I, I think that it sounds like there is space for acknowledging the trauma of your stroke as well as the way that it's led you into your yeah. current art practice, the reinvention, and that you're really... Um, called to create this retreat I'm, I'm eager to see how that how you put that together and what the facilitation also does for you as your artist self yeah. absolutely it's yeah. all of that so appreciate you doing this there have been a handful of artists since getting back into this that have been so welcoming and just approachable mm -hmm. uh, Mady liked one of my things and shared it. I about died. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, really? like having Beyonce like <laughs> like your coat. It completely was. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited, you know. Yeah. But I, um, yeah, I'm so grateful for what happened to me, um, because it has given me a new perspective mm. on a lot of things, mm. and I'm that I made it through. But I wouldn't be here trying new things and meeting new people um had it not happened huh. yeah yeah and i cosmic think cosmic two by four sometimes exactly. <laughs> on anyone <laughs> exactly yeah. if you can survive it it's great but yes yeah, you have to you have two choices you can hate it or you can embrace it and yeah yeah or both <laughs> both yeah both absolutely both. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. this. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show and, and nice to get to know you. And I'll see you later today in the Art Friends yeah. School. And anyone watching this, please comment, uh, cheer her on, give her a follow, share with your friends if it resonates, and um, maybe check out her retreat that's coming up the Setbacks into Setups Art Retreat by Krista Brock. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> uh, thank you okay. so much. It's been yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. I'd love to have you inside of Art Friends School, where we go deeper into these topics. Follow the link that's in the show notes or find it on my website at onamika.com.